Hello, it's Christmas Eve 2054 and welcome to this global weather roundup for the big day tomorrow. Now let's start with Europe, where we find low pressure to the north of Scotland. We can expect a wild rather than a white Christmas for the UK. Wet and windy in the north and west, 8 Celsius in Edinburgh, 12 in London. It's also unsettled in the Alps, but really not great ski conditions. Heavy rain on lower slopes of the Alps, snow confined to the higher resorts. Very mild westerlies extend across much of northern Europe, which means very few places will see freezing conditions during the daytime. In fact, below zero temperatures are only really likely in the far north of Norway and Finland and much further east across Russia, despite the time of year. Of course, further south across the globe, it's midsummer, and midsummer heat can be found in western parts of South Africa as well as Namibia. With heavy rain expected further east to the north of Durban, drier and sunnier conditions are expected in the west. Widely, temperatures will peak into the low to mid 30s, with a high of 39 degrees in Namibia. The heat wave intensifies further south after Christmas Day, with temperatures reaching 40 Celsius in the south of South Africa by the 28th. This could have serious impacts on health, and if the heat wave becomes prolonged, could also threaten crop yields. But the hottest weather this Christmas is expected in Australia, with heavy rain expected in eastern parts of Queensland. Across much of the interior, it's the very high temperatures that are the main concern. Temperatures will widely exceed 40 degrees, and it will be unusually hot in South Australia and Victoria. The hot spots will be 48 Celsius in northern parts of South Australia. Authorities have issued health alerts for parts of Victoria, and fire warnings are in place for several other states, including Western Australia and South Australia. Extra doctors, paramedics, nurses and call centre staff will be working throughout Christmas because of the forecast conditions. Thankfully, this isn't a real forecast, but it is one possible scenario for the type of weather we could see at Christmas around the world in about 30 years' time. Now, possible and could are words that express uncertainty, but don't let that lull you into a false sense of security. There is a range of potential weather we could experience in 2054. This partly depends on natural variations in climate year to year. But beyond 2050, the amount we reduce greenhouse gases today will have an increasing effect on global warming. Greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide have been rising in our atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution. And in that time, the world has warmed by more than a degree Celsius. This forecast was based on a high emission scenario, but at this time horizon, there isn't so much difference between scenarios. The big differences occur during the second half of the century. It's a useful way to illustrate how global weather patterns may change and what they could look like if we don't curb emissions. Now, in this particular year, an El Nino happens to emerge in the computer model simulation we looked at here. Other simulations produce El Ninos in different years. The dates of specific events can't be predicted this far in advance. But we can still expect El Ninos to happen every few years. This climate phenomenon can lead to warmer weather across parts of South America, as well as warmer and drier weather in South Africa and parts of Australia. This is apparent in the global temperature anomaly map for Christmas Day 2054. It compares maximum temperatures on this particular day in 2054 with the 30-year global average from 1981 to 2010. Now, the red areas show that many parts of the world are warmer than the long-term average in recent decades. There are still some cold spots, and that's because it's one computer simulation of the weather on a single day just the same as our current weather forecast you see online and in television. The main difference being the composition of the atmosphere. But as you can see, there is much more red on the map than blue. As we saw in the forecast, South Australia and Victoria were much hotter than we would expect to see today. But the most extreme warming was found in North America, Northern Europe and Northern Russia. Some places within the Arctic Circle were more than 20 degrees above the present day average. These are cold places anyway, and it's the middle of winter, but this extreme warming can have serious consequences on snow cover, permafrost, and Arctic sea ice extent. The climate is already changing, so we already have an idea of what these types of conditions will feel like. 
the extraordinary Siberian heatwave during the first half of 2020, which resulted in wildfires, loss of permafrost and an invasion of pests. The Australian wildfires of 2019 to 2020 and the Cape Town drought between 2015 and 2017. Anthropogenic climate change played a role in all of these events, along with other factors. Decision makers now face the dual challenge of reducing emissions and managing risks associated with the transition to a low carbon economy, whilst also adapting to changes in our climate now and in the future.